students in this video we are going to solve a problem an example on the resultant of concurrent force system in space let us read the statement i hope you are ready with a pen notebook and calculator calculator is must if the force exerted by cables ab and ac at point a are 100 newton and 120 newton respectively determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force at point a so you have to find out the magnitude of the resultant and direction of the resultant force resultant force of what resultant force of 100 newton and 120 newton what are 100 newton and 120 newton forces these are the forces exerted by the cables ab and ac so these are the forces exerted by the cables at point a so what is the direction of these forces from a to b and from a to c so the force in the cable ab is 100 newton which is acting from A to B. So I will call that force as F A B. And the force in the cable A C is 120 Newton. So the direction of force is from A to C. So that is F A C. Right? So these two forces are acting at point A. So these two forces are forming a system of concurrent forces. Now we have to find out the resultant of these two forces which are acting at point A. Now the resultant, that is the summation of these two forces is nothing but the resultant force. So the resultant force is equal to force in the cable AB plus force in the cable AC. Sum of all the forces acting at a point is nothing but the resultant of those forces. Now to write these force vectors FAB and FAC, you must write the unit vectors. And for the unit vectors, you must know the position vectors. And for position vectors, you must know the yes, coordinates, coordinates of the points. Now we have to write the coordinates of points A b and c with respect to the origin but see here the x-axis is given in this direction and this is y-axis and the vertical axis is z so these axes are given in the example in the figure now what are the coordinates of point a point a is on which axis it is on z axis so the x and the y coordinates must be 0. So the coordinates of point A x0 y0 and to write the z coordinate you have to see the line parallel to z axis. So this is 4 meters. So it is plus 4. So the coordinates of point A 0, 0, 4. Now you tell me what are the coordinates of point B? B is on which axis? It is on X axis. So Y and Z coordinates are 0. And what is the X coordinate? See the dimension line parallel to X axis. So it is 4 meters. So it is plus X. So plus 4. So it is 4, 0 and 0. Now coordinates of point C. C is in which plane? It is in horizontal plane. That is X, Y plane. Here X, Y plane is horizontal. So point is on X, Y plane. Hence the Z coordinate will be 0. And what is the X coordinate of C? See the dimensional line parallel to X axis. So it is 4. Y is, here Y axis is horizontal. See the dimensional line parallel to Y axis. So it is 2 meters plus 2 and Z coordinate is 0. 
So that is the first step to write the coordinates of the points. Now we will write the force vectors. Force vector AB is equal to the magnitude of force FAB into unit vector along the line AB. Right? What is the magnitude of force AB, FAB? It is 100 Newton. FAB is 100 and FAC is 120. So it is 100 into unit vector along AB. For that, we have to see B minus A. Coordinates of B minus coordinates of A. So it is 4 minus 0 I plus 0 minus 0 J plus 0 minus 4 K upon its magnitude that is square root of 4 square plus 0 square plus 4 square. So we get force vector AB is equal to after doing the calculations you will have 70.71i j coefficient is 0 minus 70.71k so this is equation 1 is it clear please do the calculations now force vector ac magnitude fac into unit vector along AC. So the what is the magnitude of force in AC? It is 120 into unit vector along AC that is C minus A 4 minus 0 I plus 2 minus 0 J plus 0 minus 4 k upon its magnitude square root of 4 square plus 2 square plus 4 square so the force vector along ac is given by please do the calculations 80 i plus 40 j minus 80 so this is equation 2. Now we have written both the forces in vector form that is FABA, FAC. Now the resultant force have you noted down? Okay. So the resultant force is equal to FAB plus FAC. That means we have to add the corresponding I coefficients of FAB and FAC and the corresponding J coefficients and corresponding K coefficients. So it is for FAB, I coefficient is 70.71 and for FAC it is 80. So plus 80. I plus here J coefficient is 0, here J coefficient is 40, 40 J plus here K coefficient for AB is minus 70.71 and here it is minus 80 K. So the resultant vector, the resultant of these two forces is given by 150.71 I plus 40 J minus 80 sorry so it is 150.71 I plus 
plus 40 j minus 150.71 k so this is the resultant vector now you have to find out the magnitude and direction of the resultant force so the magnitude of resultant force is given by r is equal to square root of 150.71 square plus 40 square plus 150.71 square this gives you 216.86 this is the magnitude of resultant force now how do you find out the direction to find the direction of force in space you have to calculate three angles theta x theta y and theta z so theta x is given by it is cos inverse fx upon f x component of f upon the resultant force so here x component of resultant that is 150.71 upon the resultant force is 216.86 theta y cos inverse fy or ry you can say it is 40 upon r 216.86 and theta z so it is cos inverse r z that is minus 150.71 upon r 216.86 so after doing the calculations you will have theta x 45.86 theta y Seventy nine point three seven and theta z one thirty four point zero two. So these three angles will define the direction of resultant force. So here basically there are three steps to solve this problem. First one is you have to write the coordinates of the points. Second. You have to write the force vectors for F A B and F A C. The third is the resultant force, that is sum of the force vectors.